on this is this is live this is live welcome to the indie pod podcast i'm your host oh this is busy this is the second time this week that i have messed up the branding in the top right hand corner uh of your screen but this is the indie pod podcast and i'm your host super joe pardo and this week uh, i have a guest that I am looking forward to to talking to, uh, learning from. We're going to talk about opportunities in podcasting. Uh, that especially now that we're in this crazy upside down world uh, called the coronavirus world, where everything uh, that we thought we knew is 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 on hold basically and on pause. Uh, if you're watching this live on Facebook Live, pop in the chat where you are listening from. If you're not watching this live, if you're listening to this after the fact and uh, as a podcast on indiepodcon.com, uh, go and. Uh, and and join us every Wednesday night, uh, 8 p.m. Eastern, every single Wednesday night. It's so good to see everybody. What's up, Dave? How you been, man? It's been like, wow, it's been like two years since I saw you now that I'm thinking about. Or, yeah, it's getting close to two years since I've seen you in person, uh, met you in person. But I hope you're, you're doing well and safe. I hope everybody's families are safe and not sick, though I have been seeing more and more uh, coronavirus situations pop up in my Facebook feed, which I am not very happy to see, though I did see at least one or two people that were able to get out from under it. Uh, so that is positive. If you're dealing with that, I'm very sorry, and I hope that you recover very quickly. Uh, before I get into the opportunities that are available to you uh, in the podcasting biz and the radio world, uh, with our guest tonight, I gotta give a shout out to our sponsor. Uh, it's brought this episode is brought to you by Podbean. Podbean is an easy and powerful way to start podcasting. They give you all the tools you need for a successful podcast, such as an unlim- uh, unlimited podcast hosting, not unlimited uh, podcast distribution, monetization options for podcasts as, of any size, and live stream podcasting capabilities sign up today at www.podbean.com that's p-o-d-b-e-a-n.com all right so let's talk about the podcasting and radio businesses with our guest today i need you all to give a big warm welcome wherever you are on the couch in your bedroom in the bathroom sitting in your garage like i am give it up for Gene Piero. Woo! Welcome, Gene. Hey, how you doing, guys? How you doing, Joe? Uh, thanks for it's a pleasure being here, by the way. Thank you. It's a pleasure to have you here. So, for anyone who doesn't know uh, Eugene, or not Eugene, but you, Gene, <laughs> uh, and uh, Hamilton Radio, why don't you give everybody a, a, a earful there? Oh, sure. Uh, Hamilton Radio was established in 1996-97, and uh, we've been around almost 20 20- so 20 some years and uh we've been in broadcasting since then and um basically we take uh, a person that either has broadcast experience or doesn't have broadcast experience and create something from them or help create whatever they started and add to it um we are a media broadcasting forum where we do music talk and comedy um we allow a lot of the, the stuff that regular radio doesn't allow um, but we also are a quick network. So we're a lot of different things in one area. And uh, I love doing what I do. I, I just love the opportunity to take today and tell people, listen, if you've never been a podcaster or have never been a radio show host, today is your opportunity to get involved with either one or the other. They're both burning up. They're burning up. Celebrities are doing it everywhere. Um, Hamilton Radio is exploding as far as podcasts are, are concerned because I think the podcasts are going to be outnumbering the radio shows since we have this issue. But like I tell everybody, Joe, don't let it get you down because uh, the thing is we have to find other ways to, you know, when there's when there's something in our way, we go around it. It's an obstacle. We go over it. We go around it or under it. But we just, you know, if you can't go through it, that's what you have to do. You have to find another will, another way to go. And I think that's what we do in this radio community and podcast community. Cause I think they're both coincide with one another. What do you think? Uh, I would agree. Dave, Dave uh, is saying that his, your volume is a little low. Is he saying Hamilton radio? He is saying Hamilton radio. 
Uh, for the people at home, what's the what's the website for them to go check oh. that out after they're done listening or watching this? Well, by the way, we're live on Help the Radio too. I put this up on Help the oh. Radio channel once. We're live too. Uh, but yeah, it's HamiltonRadio.net. That's basically the website. We you know we've interviewed a lot of celebrities and uh, we're uh, very big in the industry. We've um, you know as far as as concerned, we are uh, the number one radio station in New Jersey for going into ten years. On uh, some websites like uh, FM Radio uh, Guide and a couple other websites, we've been nominated for different awards here and there, as I told you in the past. So I'm happy and proud of that. I'm trying to speak a little bit louder if that helps. I Dave think Le- I think it does. Yeah, I, I think it was. Well, it's also because uh, it gets kind of muddled if there's any sound coming out of your phone from me, uh, as we were talking about before, where it's like trying to like limit the feedback loop from happening. Uh, but it's all, it's all good. It's all good. So in my, you know, in my opinion, uh, we are, oh, there you go, Dave Hamilton radio.net. Thank you, uh, for popping that in the chat. So we, um, you know, I, we are we are definitely more at a crossroads. I think that we've been uh, kind of there for for I would say at least two years. I mean, when I listen to sports talk radio here in Philly, uh, they talk they say the word podcast at least one to three times an hour, whether it's in commercials or hey, we got this you know sports and out an- analyzer on, and he's got you know his show is called blah 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 blah. Um, and you should totally go listen to it or, uh, you know, go birds radio, which is also go, go birds podcast, which they, it's the same, it's the same crew, just not doing it on the radio. They're doing it in their podcast form. So yeah, I, I, I think that, um, the, the barrier to entry is really low. If you have any kind of technical background, uh, and even if you don't at this point, I mean, things like anchor kind of just like, you know, it, it's the as simple as turning on your phone and like, now I'm doing a podcast. I mean, it's super closed loop and I would probably not recommend doing it that way. But the, you know, when it comes to opportunities to get the reps in, uh, as a kid who would tape record himself with his friends, uh, you know, and, and because we didn't have video cameras at the time, uh, it, you know, this is, this is leaps and bounds easier than, than it ever was. This is how it starts, doesn't it? Cause you know, as a kid, I did the same thing, you know, <laughs> you, you listen to your voice and then you hear some playbacks and then you maybe do some voices and you, you know, try this and you try that. And then, you know, eventually you, you either get into the, get into this or get into another career. Some of us get into other careers and then come back to this. Some of us do this and then go into other careers and then come back to it again. But listen, once it's in your system, you never, it never leaves you. Um, I have a good friend now that's actually a podcaster too. His name is John Taffer. He does Bar Rescue. And if you ever seen Bar Rescue, Bar Rescue is an awesome show. He takes these bars that are dying and he just creates a, a great reality TV show from it. Now, a lot of it's scripted. I understand that. But he does a lot of great stuff. And John is a great guy, um, which just started a podcast probably not more than a month ago. That's so, that's I hadn't I hadn't heard that he started a podcast, but I'm not, honestly not surprised, especially if it was within a month ago when things started to go into lockdown, like he can't create his awesome TV shows. So it's a thing that you should probably look at doing if you are, you know, trying to create content and, 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 and foster a, uh, you know, a, uh, a community around which he has, right. A, a huge fan base of, so it, yeah. And it's easy. It's uh, to me, I mean, unless you're a big time writer, like it's easier to just turn on the microphone and just start talking. Right. Uh, than it is to like start writing a blog post and then like, the, you know have somebody edit it and and all that like i mean you still might have somebody edit your podcast it depends on how you know how in depth you want to get with it in this case we're live so you know uh but it's just yeah i i'm really um i i, I think that it's just it's a really great time it's been a great time uh and it's it's only gotten easier to to do like things like this right where we're talking two cameras i got the scrolling stuff at the bottom i can you know uh michael what's going on uh yeah i didn't have a video camera until uh well i think we had one in the house and i've used it like once or twice but it, it was not my because i couldn't edit the footage like I now, right? Like I, I could take footage from my phone or one of my Canon cameras, drop it right into my, in my you know, into my uh, laptop and just start editing and playing around with it and dropping other video clips and stuff. So it, it, the, the barrier to entry was still higher, even, even to have our tape recorder, right? Because 
you had to have the recorder and you had to have a tape, a tape that was still good, you know, and as a kid, it wasn't always a thing that you could have, I, I had access to. So, um, yeah, so I, 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 and you're, you're absolutely right about more and more celebrities getting, getting into this. Uh, I, you know, I think that it helps in, in a lot of ways, uh, get more people to be knowledgeable about podcasts in general. Um, and kind of legitimizes the fact that like, you don't just go and turn on the radio or you just don't click on the TV and boom, it's there for you. Like you have to go, you have to work for it a little bit, but once you get there, like it's there, like you just work it into your, into your thing. Um, but yeah. But what I love about radio shows and podcasts though, Joe, I'll be honest with you is it takes you away from the reality of what's going on outside now. I mean, if you turn on regular media, that's all you hear is about the coronavirus. We're not talking about that, right? We're talking about how to create opportunity within that environment, but at the same time, create another reality for other people so they don't have to hear about it for an hour and then just kick back and relax and just enjoy what we have to say and our com camaraderie that we talk about and the people that we meet and the people that we're going to talk to, things we're going to be doing maybe in the summer or even, you know, even if, if it's, even if it's near winter. It doesn't really matter. The point is, we're going to keep on going, right? We're not going to stop. And we're going to keep yep. including other people and Bob getting involved. Yeah. Yeah. No, absolutely. This is, uh, you know, being able to do it virtually. Uh, I mean, going back to 2005, I mean, some of my 2004, even some uh, one of my favorite podcasts, they were all doing it like using Skype and, and make, you know, it, they all sounded like they were together, but they were all in like four different states and, you know things like that so it's it, it's it's like i said it's come a long way uh now let's let's move on to like the opportunities that there are right now so i mean podcasting see to me like when i think of of radio in like a traditional sense i think of mostly people that are in the radio biz and like that's their like profession to, to be in the radio biz versus like podcasting where it's like, it could be, you know, the fuel on the fire that is your regular, but you know, your other business, it doesn't have to be like, I'm a professional podcaster. Like I'm a professional radio guy, but I know once you step out of the like mainstream media companies of, of radio DJs and, and rate, you know, radio personalities, uh, it, it's a much different world that some people might not even realize. So if you, if you want to, uh, dive into that that'd be awesome yeah i can elaborate and also uh, do a comparison because what, what we're doing in the radio world is basically similar like i said to the podcast world so you know we're updating technology all the time and technology is actually being a lot better for us and better for you better for the new people getting aboard and there, the opportunities are endless because the, the, you can virtually start a free podcast or a free radio show with anybody around anywhere you have to just look you have to look for the opportunities and then you know you have to be ready to do something i tell people all the time come up with an idea if you don't have an idea and somebody's already doing it do the same idea but elaborate it in a different way or or change something around don't try to be unique people love uniqueness right they love they love the idea that you bring well you bring celebrities on but you don't ask them the same stupid questions over and over how you doing how's the family mm -hmm. what you know let's ask a little bit different questions like you know are you going to be touring um are you playing any other instruments on the tour are you doing this are you doing that you know and try to be different than everybody else that asks the same questions so uniqueness is is a bond that you have with radio and a bond you have with t uh, with podcasting podcasting and it gives you so many opportunities um you know being on different platforms and different times and different i mean we've got tons and tons of friends that are influencers right so a podcaster only has to start a show. They only have to do start a show. And if they get somebody that really likes them, it's an influencer. That's all they really got to do. The influencer will do all the work for you. So basically, um, they're your advertising budget. They're your people that are doing what they're doing anyway. And you just buy into them or they buy into you. I mean, there's the opportunities are endless right now. I have a lot of friends that because of the situation are going to be losing the radio stations. And it, it's a sad thing, but I told them, all right, guys, you're still going to be doing your radio show. Are you still going to be doing your podcast? And you know what their answer is? Absolutely, yes. So I said, well, then you know what? Why don't you bring your podcast or radio show over to me? See, I get all the opportunities because, unfortunately, when they fail out there, whatever problem it is, I'm still going. 
And as long as I'm still going, there's a place for me to put them. They already got a fan base. They already got people that like them. And now we'll just bring them over to Hamilton Radio and make them like them more. And also get my fan base and my people. And now probably we'll, we'll like them as well. So there's a, there's a great idea, ideological place right now where we are. Because even though this thing is around us and bothering us, it shouldn't make us complacent. It shouldn't stop us from what we're doing. It shouldn't. It should actually motivate us and say, you know what? This is good enough. We need to do more. We need to do this. I mean, have you ever been motivated, motivated by somebody that says, you know, that isn't enough. You need to do more. Well, that's what you need to do. You need to think about that and say, like, when I talked to you, Joe, a, a while ago, I said, you know, you need to do more and you're doing it. You know, you're proving to me and other people that people can do it, but they just got to have the on-site knowledge to do it. And they have to have the mindset uh, to do it. A lot of my friends have write books on mindset, which changes the mind uh, in particular to business because the business mindset is totally different than just a, a person that wants to do a show every day. If you want to do a show every day, great. If you want to do a podcast every day, great. But the thing is, do you want to take it any further? If you don't, that's great, but that's up to you. That's your choice. We want to see people excel. We want to see people ex expire and go higher and try to do more for themselves. I want to see people explode, you know, and that's what I try to bring out the explosion in them because everybody has that inside them. They just don't reach down inside for it. I'm not talking about money. I'm not talking about any type of uh, manipulation of anything other than themselves to excel themselves more. And that's part of motivation. And that's the way business motivates another business. Because when you do good, you want others to do good. Because when they do good, everybody does good. And of course, now you all reap the benefits. It, you know, it, the benefits are, are could be anything. It could be uh, an award. It could be, I mean, you know what I'm talking about, right? It could be a lot of different things. So we have to reach out for them ideas. And what I think happens with a lot of radio shows and radio show hosts and stations and stuff, they get too complacent. They don't realize that a lot of people have the ability to change a lot of people's lives, but don't give them that chance. I give them that chance. And just like you are tonight with me, you're giving me a chance to explain to people that this is the way we do business, right? This is how any business should do business. Don't you agree? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I mean, it, there, it's, it is, it's, well, I mean, I, I think that it, this is for podcasting radio is for anybody who's willing to put in the reps, right? Because like the first question that a lot of people want to ask is like, how much money do I make from this? And the first question you really need to ask is how do I get good at this? You know, to quote the Dave Jackson, uh, it's, it's really about how how are you how can you put in the the reps to to get to learn how to talk on the mic how to get to learn to work you know work on camera how to get to learn how to be able to like you know ask the question focus on the what your guest's response is and look at the comments on the side and know when it's time to click the next banner to roll over to tell everybody to subscribe on Facebook Twitter and Instagram at Indie Podcon right so it's things like that that you're only gonna get by putting in the reps and and, and putting in the time um but i think there's a lot to be said for also like the preparation of the show right and even in yourself like if you were trying to run your own business right and you're like oh you know podcasting might be a way for me to help grow uh my 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 existing customer base into like raving fans and make them feel like really connected to what i'm i'm offering uh that that sounds awesome, but at the same time, like you need to prepare yourself for, you know, figuring out what your show is going to look like, and and you know, being able to show up every single week and not give up after, you know, it's, it's the same thing as like social media, right? Don't open up twenty accounts on twenty, you know, t twenty different social media platforms, and then like post one thing and then never post again on it. Like either post nothing and just secure the name. Or don't go, don't bother. You know what I mean? Like find one that works for you. So it's, you really gotta, you gotta be one to put in the reps and, and learn, you know, how to, how to work with people. It, it takes time. I mean, I'm six years in those and I still don't feel like I'm that great at it. So it's right. Nothing's easy. 
Nothing is easy. It, it, no. If you don't put the time into it, it's not going to work out for you. But you got to, you know, I, I read a lot of handicapped people. And a lot of times they'll say, oh, my God, I'm handicapped. I can't do it. I said, why can't you do it? What is the problem? Oh. I said, I, you know, I have epilepsy and I, I, I sometimes stutter, but I don't let that bother me. I don't let that get me down. I have a bad back. I don't let that bother me. I still do what I have to do. Yeah, well, I mean, if yeah, I mean, I, I have plenty of friends in the podcasting space that uh, have disabilities. When Charles M- Max uh, Max Maxwell Ivy, um, uh, Daniel Coulter, uh, oh, I'm gonna miss some. There's some na- other names I'm missing, but you know, the point being is, is that it's they find a way to do it, uh, and if they, you know, and as Max says, like if I can do it, as as blind as I, you know, as literally blind. Uh, what's your excuse as this show says? So yeah, they're, they're the excuse I think is, I mean, it's easy to come up with excuses, right? Um, let's see. Do you need, to, uh, Anita says, uh, do you need to delete if on the first videos have no viewers? Uh, I assume you're talking about like if you were posting to say YouTube or something like that or to Facebook, I mean, I- I'll start. I, I do not feel uh, that you should delete any of the videos. I mean, unless it's like really, really, really bad and you never actually release it, save it, save it. Don't delete it. Uh, but you don't have to necessarily release it. It's it, that's really up to you. But uh, I would say leave it open because at some point, like a year from now, two years from now, someone's going to become such a raving fan that they're going to go back through your catalog and they're going to be like, oh, wow, like I never saw this video before. Uh, or if it's five years later, they will have a really hard time scrolling back to find that. And when they do, they'll be pleasantly surprised. Plus, you'll have fodder for yourself to be like, hey, listen to how bad I was on my first podcast when you think that you can't do it. Uh, what, what do you what do you think, Gene? No, I, I agree with you. You know, I, I could I could take a, uh, a message from when we talked to Stone Cold Steve Austin from the, the World Wrestling Entertainment Organization. And he said when he got into podcasting, he didn't even know if he could do it, but he knew he could do ring work. He didn't know he could do podcasting. He says, man, this stuff is easy, man. He said, I don't have a problem doing it. He was like such a great guy. And then we told him, you know, you should tag, you should tag all your videos and tag all your audios and make sure that people know that you're on them. He's like, I never thought about that. I was supposed to be up to my producer, but sometimes people don't think, and you're right. If you don't tag the videos and if you don't, tag any of the audios that you do whether it's on Spreaker, any podcast company or any type of business that you do nobody's going to be able to find you so that's the thing that's why tags are so important when you do a video because i I can't emphasize enough that if you don't tag anything it's going to hurt you in the long run so always tag at least two or three tags and try to make them general but always include the celebrity that's involved in the tag you don't have to include yourself so much but the celebrity the name of the show and maybe whatever else you want. I mean, they give you like up to 10 tags, right? So you can, you can play with it and you can also go in and edit it when you want too. but you want to make sure you at least give them three tags. In. I agree. Yeah. I, you know what? The other thing is, is you, none of your videos should have no views because you should at least go watch your view, your video uh, <laughs> at least once to give it, you know, for 10 seconds to give it a view. So then you don't have any view- videos with no views. You got at least one view and that should be enough. And your mom and your dad should probably go watch it too. So like that should give you at least three views right there. And then you don't have any views with no viewers. Well, right now I'll just let you know that we're going to have the radio. I've looked at something up in 151 recent cities and 23 countries all over the world. So that means um, that's over 42 million people that are listening right now. The, the, to this, to the to this jibber jabber that I'm doing right here. To this podcast right now. Yep. Uh-huh. <laughs> on, on cell phones, iPhones, apps, website links. Um, we're also on TuneIn, so people can listen to us on Spreak, uh, on uh, Alexa, Google. Um, we're on Roku. There's a lot of different places, and we're also on CFTV uh, TV for the uh, Christian Family TV Network. We have our own channel on there, which my good friend Eric in south jersey gave us which is a great guy and i love eric he's an awesome person and he saw the the volume of people that we were getting he just wanted to jump aboard and and work with us and i love that i love people like i said i love people that see what you're doing and are inspired by you and want to do more and help you and help themselves at the same time that that's what i call helping hands 
You know, I call that yeah. helping helping businesses helping each, each other. Yeah, absolutely. So Anita says, thank you. Tagging will not annoy people. Most people dislike being tagged. So we were talking about tags like hashtag motivational tips or hashtag inspiration or hashtag business marketing or, or something to that effect. Tagging people, eh, you know, I, I, I don't do that. I don't do yeah, that. It, yeah, it gets old for people real quick. Um, yeah. There's only one person I let do that for me, and that's because he's blind. <laughs> and that's Max. <laughs> that's understandable. So what I wanted to say was, too, with, with the podcast and radio show, we have the same uh, type of issues. Where do we promote it? Do we promote it all on Facebook? Do we promote so on YouTube? Do we promote so on Instagram? Do we promote so on Twitter? Do we, you know, or do you promote every different, every different angle that you can think of? And then, of course, then you're promoting all the groups on Facebook, and then you've got, you know, friends on Twitter. And I mean, it's endless. So what we have to do is we have to streamline where we think the most people that will be receptive to what we're putting out there. And that's whether it's music groups or, or talk groups or whatever. The point is, it's got to correspond to what their guidelines are. And it's very important to get their guidelines, because if they don't allow you on there and they don't allow you to post it, don't even join the groups. I tell people that all the time. Don't waste your time posting the groups if you're going to get turned down, if they're going to turn you in, if there's going to be a problem. So don't even bother. But people still do it, and they get banned. Yeah, I, I mean, like in in, in the Indie Pod podcast group, we uh, or Indie Podcasters group, we we run into that uh, quite a bit, and it's it, and it's hard. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll say uh, we'll come back to your question uh, in a, in a minute or two there, Michael. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll say it's it's a real big pain in the butt because I, I feel bad uh, removing posts and having to, to explain like, Hey, there's no self promotion. And I've gotten some pushback over time. Like, well, what's the point of the group if you can't promote? And, and like, yeah, I, I, I get it, but we do post for like self promotion in that. Um, and you know, and some groups are fine with it. There, you know, there's some group, you know, groups are all right with it. But the thing is, is like when you're, especially when you're in a group for other podcasters, promoting your podcast is probably not super relevant to other podcasters unless it's unless it is in which case like reach out to me let me know and and then you you know i can approve it for you you know you say oh it was an admin approved post um because it was relevant to podcasters it was relevant to what's going on in the world it's not just some auto posted auto shared thing that you just were like I'm going to have this auto shared to every group I belong to because everybody should know what I'm doing. And it's like, well, this isn't your group to do that with, you know? So I, and I, again, I feel like a jerk sometimes doing it. And there's sometimes where I'm like, so it's like so borderline that I'm like, but if I, if I let it go now, then like, I feel bad for the person that comes next and does it. And I just, look, and I don't look the other way. So mm. it's, it puts me in a difficult position because I don't like to be in that position, but it's, it's a position I found myself in and I'm working through it for sure. <laughs> you know, it's funny. I try to do every radio show that we try to do. We put on Facebook, even the radio shows I do at home, which is a couple music shows. And, Every time I do it, of course, Facebook either mutes it or shuts it off. So I, I, then I, you know, like the question is, why do I even bother? So I bother to do it for the radio people that listen, not for the people on Facebook. I got to emphasize that to people all the time. I don't do the show on Facebook. I do the show on the radio. If you want to hear it, you can see it, hear it on the radio. I don't do it live only on Facebook when they allow me to. That's it. <laughs> I can't. Other than that, I can't do anything. I don't own Facebook. Well, yeah, right, and 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 Facebook is a pain. I mean, like I've been DJing the last like week um, after like dusting off the turntables and for and last time like first time in like two years. So for me, like I, I could get about thirty minutes in before it cuts me off, and then I have to start up a new. Like e for me, it's easy. Like I just hit the the button OBS, like stop stream, restream boom it's go it's back on but i have to run like my ipad running the live stream so i know when it shuts off because otherwise all i see is like my dj software i ain't seeing and you know i'm not going to flick back and forth to check so uh it, it is really frustrating especially when there's some djs uh that i'm friends with that like never seem to have a problem 
Like my one friend, uh, Mike Donardo, shout out to Mike. You know, he'll he'll DJ for two, three hours on there and not have a single problem. And I'm wondering if it's because he's using a lot of uh, remixed versions of songs. So maybe they're not, it's not like the algorithm isn't picking it up. Um, I'm not sure, but like, like I said, I, at least I get about 30 minutes. So like, I'm okay with that. It's not the end of the world. At least it's not like five minutes. Like, like YouTube would pick it up in, in like way less time than Facebook seems to be worried about it. I think YouTube is a lot more, uh, less, uh, oh, now, now. Yeah. yeah. Be, but uh, all right. So I, in my mind is thinking back like five years ago where they were like hey you're playing this music like it's it shuts it down it shut you off you know right away reverse really because youtube uh, we 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 can play pretty much anything and they won't say anything because i think they pay for every all the rights like an umbrella type policy for all the rights where facebook only pays for partial rights and you know maybe independent artists or i mean i've even heard uh the com comedians um got some comedians that we've had, they've got shut down not only for, for language, but for other people using other comedians lines and stuff. So there's a crossover there that a lot of people don't understand. I mean, rights are rights, but when does somebody's rights affect somebody else's rights? If you're just using a line or something for somebody else, rather than the whole, you know what I mean? Paragraph mm. or joke or something. So there's a lot of intertwining things there that we have to be aware of, but, they make up the rules as they go along. I have a friend that works at Google, and he told me Facebook makes up the rules as they go along. They don't have one set of uh, guidelines and goals and rules. Um, if they have a friend that they like and the person has a lot of views and they can control them, they're probably going to allow them to do that because they can make more money off the ads. Does that make sense? I felt that way about YouTube for the longest time because you'd see these like mashup like videos where it's like the dinosaurs TV show mashed up with like Biggie and and I'm like, well, what the heck? Like, how are they getting away with it? <laughs> oh, it's because they got they went viral. Some you know the video itself went viral on an account that has like three videos on it, and all of a sudden like everybody just looks the other way. But like Joe puts together a, a, a two hour mashup album of Disney music and hip hop instrumentals and rock instrumentals uh, to tell the story of up and whoa, like everybody's claiming their video, you know, their rights on that video like that. I'm like, what the heck? Like, that's crazy. Like ridiculous. Here, here's a good example of that. Uh, my one friend passed, passed away, Eddie Money, is a great musician, good mm -hmm. artist from New York. And his kids now have their own Facebook thing. And they start playing his music, and they're shut down. His kids, his kids. Well, his did Ed, yeah, but do, does Eddie own the rights to the music, or the estate yeah, own the rights? See, that, that's what I'm getting to. But they don't have as many fans as the dad had because the dad had the, the 70s and 80s and the 90s, and you know, they're only kids, and they're not under the same name as Eddie Money, but they're under the same Facebook as Eddie Money. So even even celebrities' kids have a hard time because they shut them off because their father or their mother or their brother or their sister have the rights to the songs. They don't. So that's what I'm saying. You have to see that it's, it's an advertising uh, moneymaker for them to have the original person do it and allow them to get through it. And then other people aren't allowed to do it. That's how it works. That is frustrating. That is frustrating. Um, before we before we go on, normally I would be plugging uh, my the Indie Pod podcast or Indie Pod, yeah, Indie Podcast Conference. Uh, it's so many different variations of the Indie Indie Pod name. Uh, indie Pod Indie Podcast Conference in September twenty fourth to the twenty sixth twenty uh, twenty twenty. Assuming that we can do it uh, live and in person, right here, right here outside of Philadelphia, uh, you can get your discount code IPP to get ten percent off your uh, your ticket. Go to indiepodcon dot com slash register uh, to do so. But like normally, I would be like talking all about that event. But this week. I am doing on Saturday a we did we did something similar uh two weekends ago where we did the first ever virtual live indie pod uh 
conference, like independent podcast conference. It was all virtual. It was two days long, and I and I hosted the thing uh, from like it was like nineteen hours total. Um, if you want to check that out, go to indiepodcon.com slash virtual. It's still available for free right now, uh, but it's also part of the uh, the Icon Lifetime Bundle Virtual Ticket. Uh, that's only thirty three bucks if you go to indiepodcon.com slash bundle and use the offer code virtual um i had it scrolling down here below but anyway uh this saturday i'm hosting the free live virtual super entrepreneur conference eight hours of learning and inspiration this saturday over at superjoeparter.com slash super it's totally free there's no email list to sign up for it's being streamed on both uh, youtube and facebook so you can join the conversation just like people are joining this conversation right here just like we're going to answer michael's question after i get done plugging this after after i get done plugging this con- uh, conference um and it's it's going to be a lot of fun totally live uh i'll be hosting it uh we have oh, about 20 speakers uh from all literally all over the world from australia uh to wales to here in the north you know in the northeast all the way to the west coast uh it's it's going to be a ton of fun i i know la- like two weeks ago everybody had such a great time we had hundreds of people watching uh at any given moment it was it was it was awesome. It was it was completely epic. Um, so come join us if you're an entrepreneur if and looking for inspiration, looking on how you can turn the tide on this, you know, COVID eighteen COVID nineteen issue uh, that you might be running into for your entrepreneurship business. Uh, this 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 is the event to be at. It's all day Saturday, nine a.m. Eastern to five p.m. Uh, yeah, 5 p.m. Eastern. Uh, it's it's going to be a lot of fun. That's superjoepardo.com slash super. So we have a question from Michael. He says, my podcast is just audio for now. It's weekly. It's four months old. I prep a lot for what I'm going to say. I admit I'm not a, I'm not marketing and need to get on that. When should I add video? Will I be stunted if I don't add video? Would you like to take the first stab at this, Gene? Well, uh, looking at it from a radio point of view, I would say that um, you can add the video at any time, uh, but I would promote the video coming. The video's coming. So the video is coming the next month and then maybe it's, you know, bring it in, you know, in a slow movement, but then you can look at it another way and say, well, you know what? Tomorrow is another day, but let's do the video now, get it out there now. So people can have that to look forward to as well as the audio. That's what I would do. I would do both at once because I take advantage of the technology today and get it up on video as well as radio and also podcasts. In fact, I would reach out to a lot of radio stations and say, hey, why don't you guys play my podcast? And I'll work a deal out with you. I know I would. I mean, that's what I'm working on doing with a lot of podcast podcasters. So technically, get it out everywhere and then bring the video to it. That's going to bring you more fans. Yeah, uh, I think depending on how, you know, depending, Michael, how you're um, recording your podcast right now, it might actually be super easy for you to add to uh, add video. I mean, excuse me, if you're recording via a phone, I mean, the phone already has a camera built in, like just use the video app instead of the instead of the audio app right if you're recording uh with you know with a microphone like i have plugged right into my my computer here uh adding a webcam is not a hard thing to do so um there's plenty of recording software you get obs that's totally free uh it requires a little bit of understanding of how to set it up but like you know just free guides on how to set it up and you could like get your own like logo in the side like we have up here in the top right hand corner um or you could use Streamyard. i think Streamyard, while it's free you'll have their logo branding in the top um but i think you can get away with uh I think they do record it. I don't know how long the recording time is. Uh, pricing. I'm looking it up right now. So for free, blah, 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 green screen, stream anywhere. There are streaming limits. Stream up to 20 hours per month for free. But you don't need to necessarily stream. But I would say if you're if you're comfortable with 
uh, with doing it live, you know, you could be streaming to, to Facebook and then download the, the audio right from Facebook if they don't. I mean, I couldn't see real quick if um, if they offered that. Uh, let's see. GarageBand with microphone and I have a webcam. So, yeah, that's that's awesome. So if you're using a Mac, you I mean, I wouldn't totally suggest using it um what's the photo booth can record video and audio at the same time but it records even if you have a high def camera it records it at 480p uh so it won't look very crispy uh but if if that's as far as your knowledge of being able to get it to to go is then uh then i would say go for it like it doesn't it doesn't hurt um to to you know Let's see. Oh, he says I'm comfortable with live. Yeah, so I would totally check out StreamYard. Like they have a free version of it. You can start streaming right to Facebook, and then you can download that video, and then you can clip it out if you want to. You know, make thirty second clips or ten second clips of like you saying something, uh, and 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 using that blah photo booth. Yeah, I yeah I wouldn't. I probably wouldn't recommend that. But if your if your tech level is like really low, then it's an option. Though at that point, I might recommend just using your your phone, your phone's uh you know camera, depending on which phone you got. But yeah, so I I, I think that you absolutely you know video gives you another opportunity to share on so especially on on social media without having to go and down da- do like audiograms. Like I would tech I would recommend like headliner app uh headliner dot app i think is the website uh where you could take your audio and like plug it into like a you know video with like a waveform kind of thing like that's cool but people you know want to see your face like that's that's what it's all about right it's um it's like i was explaining i forget who i was talking to the other day uh it was probably like a month ago it was probably like a month ago at this point uh or two months ago i was like you know, websites, they all got faces on them. And, uh, and and she's like, oh, I don't understand. I was like, why? I was like, well, because people people will want to see a face. They want to identify with somebody. So I was like, even if it's not the first thing you see at the top of the web page, you scroll down a little bit, you're going to find a face uh, because people want to identify with, with faces. That's that's what we do as humans. Um, so it it's very helpful if you, you do that. And having a picture of yourself is in an audiogram is cool, but it's not the same. It's not the same thing as you recording it and clipping it. You are very welcome, Michael. Thank you for, for asking such a great question. So, uh, Gene, what, what would you, what would you say right now? If you're, you, I don't have a podcast yet, right? What, what's like three things that I should be looking to do if I don't have a podcast and I think it's something I want to do, but I haven't, put the you know the 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 wheels to the road yet yeah I, there's a lot of things uh, first of all i i tell you google everything um i'm i'm a google guy i mean uh, i tell people to google if you have an idea for something google it and see if somebody else had that idea or what are they doing with it and i think that's a good place to start to google what you want to do what you're looking for as a podcast what you're looking for as an, uh, an idea as a dream, as a goal. You know, the funny thing about podcasts is you can you can pretty much say and do anything you want. It's your podcast, but you can also, and I tell this to people all the time, you can bring a general audience, which is going to give you a big mass amount of people right, compared to a small amount of people if you're a little bit more unique as far as language, as far as this and as far as that, you're going to lose a lot of the people right there. And so the idea is to become as big and as as best you can be and as and and as important as you can be at this time. So you want to be go for as big a bite of a sandwich type of thing, as an example, rather than a little teeny bite at a time, because that's going to take you places. You know, I was just going to say a little bit about that. I help, I'll come up with the three things. I just want to tell you, though. Yeah, yeah if you, go go my, you go to my website, right? HamiltonRadio.net. We got William Shatner. We've got uh, Stephanie Courtney, which is the progressive girl. Everybody knows her. Uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin. George the Animal Steel, which is an old wrestler. Um, Anthony Michael of the – Anthony Kryzan of the Spin Doctors and Howie Mandel of The Deal and all the other shows. Um, you know, so – but what I'm saying is celebrity pictures, right, They will, they will bring up more – in Google than anything else because of their status and what they're doing. So 
when I say to Google that, you always want to Google that because that's always going to be the top priority of what you want to do. But the three things you basically need are the tools that we need to broadcast, which is either a phone, which you, you can use it today, or I always recommend a laptop. Uh, a PC is probably the best. A good uh, microphone, headphone, USB uh, works well. Um, you you want to try to get a great webcam. I mean, webcam cameras right now are, are relatively cheap, Joe. I mean, um, you can get a 1280p, you know, uh, from Logitech. I, I don't know how people feel about the certain ones, but I think they're all pretty much the same right now. Um, but you want to get something that's going to, you know, uh, you'll be able to get a wide view on things if you need to get a wide view, uh, but something that you can zoom in on when you need to. Um, the way the way you build things is to start slow. But in this area of when you start, you got to start big or go home because there's so many other people. The numbers are staggering of the people that think they could podcast from home and just go into this and like, you know, they don't get a podcast. They have nothing to talk about. They don't know what they're going to say. And they just go in it open, open ended. And, and that's what you don't want to do. You want to try to have it scripted a little bit, just like Michael does, like you do and like I do. And then if you're interviewing somebody, have a couple bullet points. I always recommend maybe five or 10 bullet points. And if you hit them, great. If you don't, that's good too. But at least you have an idea because you don't know where the conversation is going to go. If your interview person wants to take it to another level and talk more than you, that's great because you want them to um, expand on their ideas and what they're looking to do. Maybe they got a book coming out. Maybe they got this coming out. So you always want to try to give them that a uh, sense of that you're going to let them talk about whatever they want to talk about. And at the same time, they feel comfortable. They feel warm and respected. You feel comfortable and you're like, yeah, go ahead. You know, this is your time. And that's what we do. That's what we do together. You do. I do it. Um, my daughter does it, you know, and a lot of the radio show hosts do it, too. But that's what makes you successful by letting the people know that you're there for them. And if they need to come back, you can, you'll have them back, whatever you want to do. But the point is, be flexible with people. A lot of people in this in this uh, in this world today are very rigid. And they don't allow you to be flexible. When you're more flexible, people will see that as a good hum humanitarian thing. And they would love that. And they, they, you know, that's why people have been with me for almost 20 years. I have some of my first listeners that have been with me almost 20 years. And I don't wow. know any other station that could say that. Um, some of them still email me today. Thank you for the music. Thank you for the information. Thank you for the credibility. Thank you for this. Thank you for that. And when sponsors and people hear that, they're like, I'm going with this guy. This guy's got an amazing ability to reach people that a lot of other people can't, just like you, Joe. I mean, when I met you, you had that same magnetism that attracts people to listen to you. And at the same time, we have that, but we can show other people how to do it. And I think that's important too. You have to have that want, you have to want to have it, but you have to want to give it out too. You know, you have to be able to give and take. And that's the way I look at it. I, absolutely. Well, first of all, thank you. I appreciate. I appreciate that, and uh, I I I agree that you, um, being you know being flexible, being wanting to put the the spotlight on others, I think makes uh, a lot of sense from a, a you know a show building opportunity, uh, a networking opportunity to to have a reason to talk to people in a way that you wouldn't otherwise get to talk to them. Um, and, and I think that it allows you, you know, having a show also allows you to, to allow your personality to come through. Like you were saying earlier about how, you know, y you can't strive to be like somebody else cause it's not you. Right. Um, and that's one of the reasons why a lot of people don't understand how I don't, I don't really watch much TV at all. Uh, like the TV shows and things like that. Uh, I don't really consume those. Uh, I don't actually don't listen to podcasts. Uh, and I don't read books and I, I, I've made my own TV show. I've written my own books and I make my, I have several different podcasts that I do. But the reason I don't consume it is because I don't want to come off sounding like somebody else. Uh, it's, it's real easy to like get swept up and like, Oh, this is what's working for them. So like, I need to do that same thing. Um, I mean, even for my first show, the dreamers podcast, 
the uh, inspiration that came for that came off of uh, somebody telling me about Entrepreneur on Fire and John Lee Dumas and what he was doing back in 2014, uh, early 2014 at that. So I was like, well, that's cool. Like, but I, I you know, I, I, I never, I listened to one episode of his show and I've met John uh, a couple of times. Uh, really nice in person. He's been on my show before. Uh, but like, I, I listened to one episode and I listened to it a, about a year and a half or two years after I had already started podcasting. Cause like, I didn't, I don't want to take that in and turn, you know, to make it. Now, with that said, uh, my, one of the biggest things I always tell people is like, get your personality in, involved, uh, so that people can feel that because like people are going to be like, Oh, I could listen to this show. That's like your show, but I don't really care for that person or they don't, I don't identify with that person as much as I identify with you and your personality and your quirks and how you say things. And I say like, welcome everybody. Like that, those are the things that like people are going to not only, uh, you know, gravitate towards if they're, if they are so inclined to like you and like, because of that, uh, but to like, not make fun of it, but to be, it, it, to become endearing to that. And like, I love how you say you're, you know, uh, my friend, uh, Steve Swanson. I love how, like how, you know, people would ask, come up to him and be like, can you say your email address to me? And it's me at Muppet, at the MuppetCast.com. Like the way he, he says it is it's part of the show. It's part of him. And it's, it makes it fun for people to listen to, uh, like, like my, one of my favorite podcasters, Matt Hotchberg, like the way he would mispronounce names is like a running joke, but it's cause names are a hard thing to do, especially last names are like, you know, it's linguistic gymnastics sometimes, uh, especially when you're not familiar with the person or had no prior introduction to the reading their question live on the air, like, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, I, I we you know as broadcasters we've gone through that many times. I mean, I've pronounced names wrong a dozen times, but you know either. I'll, oh, I'll, wait, I'll, whoa, time out! Only a dozen? They, probably a dozen. <laughs> I was on radio years and years ago, and, and once you do that, you know you pretty much know you pre-read either everything or you um, don't mention it or you you abbreviate it. You know, and you're not you're not trying to demean the person in any way, but you just don't want to mispronounce it and then sound like a jerk. So a lot of times we will reread things over again before we actually announce it. I know that's what we used to do on the FM radio news um, where we would, uh, you know, pre-write the copy and then and listen to it and then look at it. And I'm like, oh, no, I'm not going to read this. I'm going I'm to change this around. So that's why I say only a dozen times because, you know, after a few times you realize it and you don't do it anymore. It's just like you know, committing a sin type of thing and you're redoing it over and over again. You don't do that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> See, I, 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 I'm not afraid to mispronounce names and then, and then make it like a joke. Cause like I, I'm the, you know, I can be dumb about it. It's, and it's okay to laugh, you know, laugh at yourself. No, it, it, but see, that's broadcasting. That's FM radio. That's a whole different, uh, different animal. This mm. is internet radio. This is internet broadcasting. This is radio podcasting. You can pretty much say and do anything and you can make it either funny or sad or whatever. And you can still have a good time doing it. And that's what, what I tell people is just enjoy what you do and it will show through. You know, that smile that we always talk about when, when businesses call their businesses, if you're not smiling when you're talking, the person's not going to get that smile when you're talking. They're not going to receive it. They're not going to get that vibration. And that's what's so true with businesses. They need to understand that you have to try to always smile and make people believe that you are at the best at what you do. And you do what you do. And you want other people to do it. And if you can do that, and you learn something from this podcast, say, you're listening to Joe and I, and you say, wow, this really makes sense. Maybe I'll try this in my business. Maybe I'll, you know, do this with Joe, or maybe we'll do something together. What I'm here, guys. I'm not going anywhere. You know, I'm, I'm always looking for uh, different businesses to get involved with and new sponsors and all this stuff. So just jump aboard anytime. And, you know, we'll give my contact info after that. But I'm just saying the, 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 the main part of this conversation here is, to get something from it because if you don't then it's really a waste of your time and i don't want that to happen to anybody yeah yeah no i, I absolutely i uh i i don't want people to get anything uh out of that and i and and that's i mean ty cochran talked about this uh at, at both indie podcon or 
MapCon 5 back in September and, and this past uh, virtual indie PodCon and uh, about RSS feeds and the fact that, that this is, you know, there's no gatekeepers here. The, we, we control our own destinies with, with when it comes to podcasting um, as long as we allow it. And that's, that's why we have to be leery of like Spotify because they, they become the gatekeeper if we, if we let them. Um, so Gene, before we wrap up here, uh, I would, I just want you to like plug Hamilton radio and, and, and how people can get in touch with you and, and all that. So I'm going to throw up Hamilton radio here on the, on the side. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. It's uh Hamilton radio.net. Uh, like I said, we're on a, a lot of different platforms. We're also on TuneIn radio. If you're, you know, you got Alexa or Google, you just say, you know, want to hear Hamilton radio and from tune in and uh, you can hear the music right there. You don't have to dial or anything. We're also on, you know, the, the app, we have the new app and we have events for our, on our app too, which I'm really happy about the new apps. Got a lot of stuff on it. So uh, we are Hamilton I am admin a D M I N at Hamilton radio.net. Um, I have two uh, full radio studios right now in Robbinsville, New Jersey. Um, we also do voiceovers. Uh, we do voiceover uh, for businesses, uh, for radio shows, um, I have some people that can do over a hundred different characterizations and different words, different names, different meanings, different characters. Um, I have women and men that do voiceovers. We do uh, music videos. We do, uh, we do uh, documentaries. We do movie films. We're going to be doing movie film reviews very soon and doing game reviews very soon. Um, I'm very happy to what's going on in, in, in not disrespect uh, to what's happening now, but I mean, in the future where we're headed because um again i i am an entrepreneur but i'm always expanding always moving and never stagnant in one spot and that's the key to a successful business the more you expand and more you can adapt to change the more you can change things you'll never be looked at like oh my god he just sat there and he didn't do anything and he let his business die i mean i've had a lot of friends that happened but how the radio has been around for over 20 uh, many 20, over 20 years, way over 20 years. And we are still expanding. We're working with a lot of different new people coming up and I'm very excited because when this does get back, we will be working with a lot of different, uh, companies like recreation concerts, which is going to bring back a lot of the sixties and seventies music artists that passed away in a form of just watching them reperform and, in and, and culture and music and different things and they're going to be out through new jersey new york delaware philly so wherever you guys are around you know how the radio is going to be involved with that we're also going to be involved with the wrestling organization called um ltw and uh i'm actually going to be maybe involved a lot more ways maybe being a host on the show or maybe being an announcer and and maybe i'll get involved with some of the wrestlers i don't know but the point is look we never look we never look back and say what we could have done we do it and then you look back and say, boy, I'm so glad I did it. And it's the only thing I can tell people, don't ever say never, but try it. If you like it, it works, great. Keep going with it because that's where you should be. I could not agree more. Are you going to be jumping in the ring? Is that is that what you were hinting at? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I'm going to be meeting a lot of great wrestlers. Um, I'm, I'm, I mean, some old guys, some guys that have been around for a while, some guys that are new. Um, I'm opening up all our opportunities. You know, I'm, I'm 58. I'm not really an old guy. My back is healing. Um, I mean, um, I could do a couple of leg drops and maybe some other things, but uh, I can get built up again. Um, I know someday that'll happen. I just don't know if it's the right time for me to get in the ring. Um, I'd rather be on the outside of it, but I, I'm liking, I'm liking the way everything is going. You know, I'm liking where everything's going and where it's moving me. And I'm just going with the flow, as we say, you know, just flowing down the river, doing this and doing that and trying everything and whatever works, it sticks, whatever don't doesn't stick. So again, I'm here for anybody that needs me. If they want to do a radio show, a podcast with me, you know, we can do it. We can do it live from your house. There's not a big deal with that anymore. Um, because I think that this opened up a lot of that, which is really good for the community of ours, Joe, because mm -hmm. now the, the, the radio uh, stations that didn't do it will probably do it. And the radio stations that were doing it probably expand more. 
So there's always a good thing to look forward to. And, and that's the silver lining in all this. It's just that, you know, we've become closer with our families. We've become closer with our home. And I think that we can still do this on the side, you know, but I used to do a three hour show every week. And, it, and when my girls were growing up, it was a nightmare. The dogs barking, the kids screaming. And, you know, we have a studio for that. So you don't need to do that anymore. And, you know, we're, we're going to modernize that and do more things with that, more web angles more camera angles and you know more platforms are going to be on at once so may, maybe you can only be on one platform at home but you might be able to be on three or four platforms at once live and you can read all the information live so there's a lot of ways you can make things work even better and faster by the technology we have yeah yeah they i mean it's definitely gotten a lot easier in the last couple of years uh, to, I mean, we're 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 using uh, Streamyard, but we're streaming out to restream and going out to one, two, three, four Facebook uh, areas plus YouTube. Uh, and I could go to like Twitch dot you know TV. Like, there's so many things that you 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 can get access to. I mean, you have to understand how all this works and like put it together. And that's where somebody like you, Doc uh, G, could could fit fill in that blank. You know, fill in those blanks and like walk the people through who you know like one of our, my good you know one of my good friends uh that works with you right he uh he he definitely you know and he never had a radio show before he never never did it before and and he's he's made it just go like like go go like it's crazy um you know, so and and that's for anyone that's wondering. It's Troy Alexander who uh, is is become a very good friend of mine over the years. Uh, that I was I had the fortune of getting to meet him at an event that I spoke at in Central Jersey. Um, so yeah, like and you know that's led me to to you. So so you know, and I that that goes you know plays right back into the networking uh, opportunities that exist because of getting on the mic, getting in front of people, talking to people and, and, and just making, making sense of the world around us through a microphone. Absolutely. And, and one other thing I just got to say, I just started doing um, radio stations for other people. Uh, my good friend, one of my friends in I believe, West Virginia, smoking bacon, they did a smoking bacon app. And I was talking to him. I said, why don't you have your own radio station? He's like, what do you mean? I said, just have your own radio station. You run the ads, you run the promos, you do everything. You, you can do everything on the app and you just tell me the songs you want to play. I'll give you the information. You get in there, you change whatever you want. And if you want me to change it, I'll do it. And uh, he's like, Oh, that sounds great. So he's had his radio station for about three months. He's already got 30,000 listeners. Jeez. And now what that does Jeez. to his app, that brings 30,000 listeners now to his app to listen to the show. See? And then we're yeah. going to put the station on our app which adds to our app too. So I, I, I look, I've got nothing but love for people out there when they see what I see. And that's take the opportunities you see today, make technology work for you. Don't work hard. Don't bust your butt out there. But the people that do, thank you for doing that. Um, and, you know, looking from, from this point on, um, all I can see is we're all going to be in a good, better place uh, definitely emotionally, but at, at the same point, family wise, family is important to us. Family is who we are as, uh, as a dad, my two daughters, my wife, you know, and people don't understand when you have family and you have your health and you have money then you have everything you need and then everything falls in place. And that's all I could say, because that's the true meaning of what we do. We're a family, a radio family. Come join us. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I love it. I love it. Um, all right. So I, I'm going to wrap up here. Uh, everybody, you can go and check out HamiltonRadio.net. Uh, is the app called, is it Hamilton Radio in the app stores? Uh, we, we took it out of the app stores because uh, we had a problem with uh, Google. And we also had a problem with uh, Apple. So what we did was we created our own app. And it's on our web page. So you can download the app right from our web page. It has Facebook on there. You can actually go to Facebook right through our app. You don't have to come off the app. Uh, you can watch anything on Facebook. In fact, if we were at the studio now, I could even put this show right on the Facebook app and the app in um, on the radio station. So 
um, the technology, technology is there for us, like I said, and we just have to gravitate towards it and use it because this app is definitely going to do a lot more for us because we have an event coming up, Joe, like you said, with your super podcast mm -hmm. or whatever. We can pop that right on the app and then people that on the app can say, oh, I want to hear this. I want to click on it and instantly go click mm -hmm. listen with with Apple and Google. It's got to get approved. It's got to go through a 30 day process. And there's a lot of other things involved with it. They even raise some of their fees and we charge nothing for the app. So if they download the app, I can tell you there's no spyware on it. It's a great app. Um, we're, we're redesigning it and we're looking for coupons to go in there for different events or different uh, contests. And, you know, we do music trivia. We do a lot of different things. So come aboard, guys. I'm telling you podcasters you need to come board with us <laughs> all right so uh i have uh i got a sponsor i need to read uh i need to remind everybody that day on saturday this upcoming saturday just a couple days from now we're doing the free uh super entrepreneur conference uh eight hours of learning and inspiration if you go to super slash super there is no sign up no email address needed none, none of that it's, just, it's streaming straight to youtube and straight to facebook you can join the live conversation it'll be going on from 9 a.m to 5 p.m eastern uh all day saturday i'm so pumped and absolutely looking forward to it uh and this episode has been brought to you by podbean live podbean's live stream is a unique platform for turning your podcast production into a live show and is open to any podcaster on any hosting site easily invite multiple co-hosts and guests to join the live stream earn money from live streams uh, show ticket uh, ticket sales and get listener rewards and engage your audience in new and exciting ways. If you're ready to get started, sign up today at podbean.com slash live. That's P-O-D-B-E-A-N.com slash live. Everybody, I hope you and your family uh, stay safe. Uh, it's still social distancing time. I, I see even my neighbors are starting to take it seriously, which is good on them. It's about darn time. Everybody take it serious. Um, and and I hope everybody stays safe, especially especially you, Dot G, because you're closer to <laughs> to the fire hose than I am. <laughs> now you're right. Everybody stay safe. But, you know, just like do whatever whatever our government tells you. And, and and you know, if they tell you to wear masks, wear masks. I think that's the next issue they're going to do is they're going to tell everybody to wear masks, which is what I've been telling people for for a long time. It's hard to hear under the mask when they're they're servicing you, but just be patient and and wait your turn and we'll all get through this guys. It's just going to be maybe another couple weeks or a month. And then we're probably going to be out of here and you won't even remember it. Hopefully not. I don't think pro pro long term, probably not. It'll probably be a blip on the thing. Now, I mean, if this goes further than a month from now, I think it, it probably will be remembered for, for a while to come. But, uh, but yeah, I think, I think if we get out within, by the end of this month, uh, which we may or may not, because I, I, I've seen some people saying the end of May, uh, things have been pushed back to, uh, so we'll see. I, I don't know, but I know one thing I'll be here. I'll be here next Wednesday, uh, 8 PM Eastern with another guest. Uh, my guest next week is, Oh wait, actually, no, I don't have a guest for next week. I'm supposed to be announcing the icon speakers. So, um, I don't know if we're going to do that. If you want to speak at icon six, which is in Philadelphia area, September 24th to the 26th, uh, you can apply at indiepodcon.com slash apply. I think I might have to update the, uh, it says that it probably expired, or I might have pushed it back. Uh, April 30th, yes. Yeah, so you have it until April 30th. So uh, I will probably be back with a guest next week. I'm just not sure who that guest will be. Uh, so we'll find out probably between now and next week. But all right, everybody, take care, be safe, and uh, go wear a mask. It'll make you feel